What's going on guys? Doing a little bit of fine tuning and adjusting on my metal lathe this evening. Figured I'd go ahead and fire up the camera and give you guys a shop tip video on a pretty effective technique I found uh, for aligning your tailstock with your spindle, uh, especially if you've got an older metal lathe like myself. Uh, chances are things are uh, fairly well uh, used and worn in and uh, more often than not uh, your tailstock's not necessarily going to be exactly the same as it was before and uh, may need a little bit of fine-tuning uh, to get things as centered and as true as possible uh, in relation to your spindle. Now uh, I've done quite a bit of research on various techniques uh, for truing this back up with the spindle and uh, most of them involve uh, some fairly elaborate indicator holders uh, that often mount to a faceplate or a chuck and uh, are used along with a dial indicator to measure either the inner bore of your taper here or even the outer side of a chuck or a tool bit uh, or even an indicating rod or a test bar. Uh, another technique is using uh, what is known as a test bar, very similar to this, uh, to check concentricity and uh, indicate relative uh, you know to your tailstock and then your spindle. Uh, you know each of those methods are probably a little bit more complicated than they need to be. Uh, you have to have either special indicator holders, as I've mentioned, or precision turned test bars, uh, which can be quite cost prohibitive, anywhere from 50 to 100 to even 200 or more uh, dollars. And uh, I really didn't want to get that complicated or uh, that involved financially. Uh, was something that I could ultimately just do right here in my shop uh, with things I already had on hand. So uh, what I ended up doing, I kind of made my own test bar here and uh, there really isn't much to this. Uh, what I have here uh, is just a piece of 4140. Uh, it's about 8 inches long, about 7 eighths in diameter. And uh, those dimensions really aren't critical. Uh, the main thing is just that it's not too long or too short. Uh, you know, obviously the longer it is, uh, the more precise you're going to be as far as uh, your relative measurements. But, uh, you know, if it's too short, you might give up a little bit in terms of accuracy. Uh, really, probably about six to eight inches should be fine uh, for most average sized uh, lathes. Uh, as far as diameter, you really just want something that's going to be rigid enough that it's not going to flex on you when you're putting it between centers and cutting your shoulder here. And uh, then what I ended up doing was just facing this off square on both ends, center drilling, uh, so that I had something to hold in my centers. And then after setting it between centers, I just cut a little shoulder here, uh, about an inch or so, or not even that far uh, from the end here. And uh, really probably just half an inch or so would be enough, but uh, you know, somewhere about half an inch to an inch. Uh, just to give you a zero or a reference point for your indicator. And uh, the main thing there is just that you cut in deep enough uh, and smooth and straight enough uh, that you have a good surface to read off of. And uh, now what I went ahead and did was uh, I made a little indicator holder for my tool post here. And uh, this is just a piece of bar stock. I drilled a hole for the tool post and then a hole for my indicator with a set screw. And uh, that sets up just like this. And then uh, because the threads end up a little short there, I just use a little bushing here, a piece of cut off pipe. And then my tool post handle. So unlock that down somewhat parallel to the test bar. And I can insert my indicator here, lock the set screw down, and uh, that's essentially ready to go. Now I can come over here and get a zero, and I did make a little sharpie mark just so I hit about the same point, make sure I'm somewhat accurate here. And then moving my cross slide in, put it right on the zero. And that uh, basically just gives me a reference for where my tailstock is set. And now what I simply can do is flip this 180 degrees 
put our mark back in roughly the same location. Move everything over to this side. And check. Yeah, I think I may have hit my uh, cross slide when I did that. But uh, we'll put that back on zero. And basically that'll show you how far out you're in from your spindle to your tailstock uh, as far as this axis uh, left to right. So we'll go ahead and zero that. Double check it one more time. And just flip it around, put it between centers. Make sure you don't adjust your cross slide at all. Keep your indicator nice and rigid. Try not to move that other than the stem there. And we're right back on zero. Uh, this is already perfectly aligned as I've already done that off camera. Now, uh, again, we're good off of this plane. Uh, pretty much dead center. Uh, the only thing we really need to worry about now is whether our tailstock is cocked up or down. Now, in order to measure that, it's pretty much the same idea. And uh, you can really just use a magnetic base for this. Take your indicator out here. this out of the way. Alright, now we're going to set our indicator roughly on the top dead center of the test bar here. Set zero on the tailstock side. I guess I can turn this where you guys can see it. Just get a rough zero there for the sake of the video. And now it's pretty much the same thing. <clears throat> Got a little bit of preload on the indicator. Take it out from between centers. Flip it 180 degrees. Tighten it back up and then carefully come over to this side and you'll know, see how far we're off. Now, unfortunately, the way I got my indicator set up, I'm kind of fighting myself here. So I need to readjust that, but uh, hopefully, you guys get the idea. Uh, really, just checking those two axes uh, the top center and the lateral center there. Uh, you can relatively quickly and easy with a dial indicator and some holders and uh, this very easily made test bar uh, easily get within a thousandth or better uh, on centering and aligning your tailstock. Now if you're off a couple thousandths on the top center uh, you'll probably need to shim either the front or the back side of your tailstock Definitely take it off, clean it, make sure there's no debris, dirt, grit, swarf, anything like that underneath there, chips. And uh, you know, make sure it's clean, make sure your ways and your bed is clean, make sure you're locked down good everywhere. And uh, that'll give you your most accurate reading. Uh, as far as the in and out, normally there's some adjustment screws on the sides or even the back. Uh, and you can kind of play with that uh, accordingly. So. Uh, check that out. Uh, you know, there's some better videos probably on YouTube that show a little bit more in depth on making your test bar, uh, as well as some write ups on the various machinist forms. Uh, check those out if you want to. But uh, that's just a kind of a brief overview and explanation. Uh, very quick, very simple, and uh, very cost effective uh, for something that's uh, very critical to good and accurate turning. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, got something from it. Uh, if so, leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching.